Welcome to East County Shared Ministry. We're so grateful that you're here with us. Good morning to each of you. This morning we celebrate the ministries of First Congregational Church of Antioch and Community Presbyterian Church of Pittsburgh. We are open and affirming congregations where all are welcome. And we love to say, please silence your mobile phone. <laughs> no, uh, we love to say you are welcome here. We recognize that we are on unceded native lands, uh, either of the Chochenyo Ohlone tribe or Bay Miwok or Patwin or Karkeen, and um, recognizing uh, that our indigenous brothers and sisters are still here with us. And as uh, we love to say, as a people of extravagant welcome, say it with me, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Our announcement slides uh, came out in the e-blast, e and they look like this this week. We have some birthdays for Shirley Thomas, Edie Landstrom, Sri Krishnan, and Anne-Marie Parker. And uh, there's links in there for Sunday and our Tuesday morning sacred conversation um, going through the, uh, it's week two of Against the Wall series that we're having both here on Sunday mornings and in our book study. We'll be reading through page 120 or um, chapters 8 through 16, I think. And then we'll be discussing that Tuesday. And so you're welcome to, to join in on any of the conversations and be a part of that. And our weekly social hours, Wednesdays from noon to 1 p.m. And our care team has a minute for mission today that we'd love to share with you. Good morning, church. Uh, the care team wishes you a very happy Mother's Day. I've been thinking about the difficulty of an effective care ministry during COVID. Let me give an example. If I had 500 Facebook friends, with the click of the mouse and a few keystrokes, I could post a message or a picture that a sizable number of them will see. But did I really interact with them? Did I have quality conversations? Not a chance. In 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter, Paul wrote, We were gentle among you as a nurse nurtures her own children. He knew it was crucial to the church that all were cared for. The same is true for us today. Relationships take time, and the process of nurturing isn't fully accomplished with one email, text, or even a phone call. It's done with consistent, regular personal contact and follow-up. So the care team thanks you for your patience with us during this sheltering in place and for the gifts you continue to give in helping those in need. And what is there left to say but thanks be to God. Several years ago, when Anne and I were sharing the music ministry at ECSM, on Mother's Day and Father's Day, we played our mom's or dad's favorite hymns for that day. Um, so today, I'd like to play for you my mom's favorite hymn. I was never near a piano around her that she didn't say, play my song, sis. So this one is for my mother and for mothers everywhere. It's called, I Know Who Holds tomorrow.
Thank you, Elaine. That was so beautiful. And as Elaine remembers her mother and honors her with music, my hope is that this morning we can honor all of our mothers and those of us who are mothers. And it always, always seems to me that when we think about mothering, it's important that we balance gratitude with forgiveness because all of us are imperfect and those who want to love us the most often as we know hurt us the most. And so for us to be able this morning as we celebrate Mother's Day and the incredible mystery and gift that it is to be part of a family, to know also that it's often a, a challenge to be in those intimate relationships. And so as we start the service with our peace candles, let us pray for mothers and those mothers who are newly mothers with new babies, those mothers who are nearing the end of their lives and can look back on the children that they have nurtured and potentially the grandchildren who are part of the family. And to know that their mothers on this Mother's Day who are gonna gather with families and be filled with joy and celebration and wonderful food and that there will be other families and mothers who will struggle today. There are some mothers who are having a really hard time. Uh, and that we remember all of them and pray that, that strength will come and where healing is necessary, that healing will come. So let us, let us pray. Holy God, on this Mother's Day, we pray for peace within families. We know often that those who are closest to us, who know us the best, also know us the least. And that we pray that there may be within families a growing capacity for mutual understanding, a capacity to provide space so that if there's conflict and difficulty, there is space to work it through. There is understanding and patience to work it through. And we pray for those families who are struggling, those parents who are struggling, particularly mothers, that they have strength, that they have support, that they have the capacity to be able to offer love to their children and their extended families. We know that it takes a village to raise a child. And even though we are in individual relationships, we trust that our larger connections support us in our parenting. And so we pray for communities. Our church is one such community and we pray that this community is able to support and nurture each one of us so that together we can be the best that we can be in terms of offering our friendship, offering our love, offering our support, be it as parents, be it as friends, be it as members of this community. And we pray that beyond our church, that those who are mothers will feel your support as they celebrate today, as they struggle today. May they know that you accompany them and will always be a support always be a place where they can return to again and again through prayer and find solace and peace. And it is this peace that we pray for. May peace permeate our families. May peace spread into the world. May peace sustain us, bless us, and support us. For we pray in your many names. Amen. And this morning we focus on mothers and tie it into Janie's book as she 
explores not only the role of the mother in, in her book, and I know not all of you have read it, so we will fill you in on some of the details, but also as she explores the other characters in the book who are able to offer a space of support and nurturance. And so as we look to our text today, as we sing our songs, it is our hope that it will be in support and celebration of what it is to be a mother, to have been mothered, and to be called to offer that kind of unconditional love to others. Let us worship our loving God. Amen. Amen. God, through you, every family on earth has received the gift of life. Bless the families of this earth with your love. Grant courage to those who are hurt or lonely. Endurance to those who care for sick family members. And wisdom to those in fearful times of change. Thank you for the gifts of love we have received from family and friends. As we have been loved by you and by others, so may we love. We worship you, the God of steadfast love. Amen and amen. Amen. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the Lord of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Please join me in prayer. God of all birthing, God of all living, God of all dying, we open our hearts to you. We pray for our families, in all their complex and wondrous forms, for families of our origin and for those of our choosing. We give thanks for those who have given us birth and for those who have nurtured us. Our hearts are filled with gratitude for the web of caring through which you support all of creation. Grant us the courage to nurture relationships with patience, understanding and forgiveness. Heal our broken and hardened hearts so we may extend your love to those in need. Amen. Come and find the quiet center in the crowded lives we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the frame where we are freed. Clear the chaos and the clutter, clear our eyes that we can see all the things that really matter, be at peace and simply be. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Let us offer each other signs of Christ's peace. 
Peace of Christ be with all of you. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. Christ. Good to see everyone. Hey, all right. Great. Good to see everyone. We heard some good news a little earlier that Ben's surgery went well. And we want to lift up uh, Ben and Debbie uh, um, in, during his healing process. Did you want to give any other updates, Debbie, that we didn't hear earlier? Okay. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. So um, are there joys and concerns that we'd like to share with one another today? Yeah, Mary. Um, I'm having my second cataract surgery bright and early tomorrow morning. So prayers for a successful surgery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Do I see something at the Hodges? We would ask continued prayers for our friend Lee that uh, is has had hospice. Now he's uh, is able to eat a little bit of food, and I don't know, but just prayers for him in this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Others, uh, yeah, Donald, I see your hand. And then Jenny. Yeah. Um... Prayers for me, definitely, um, financially, and I'm going to get my second COVID shot, and I'm also going to go to the doctor for a checkup, so please pray for me a lot, and also pray for my sister and pray for my friend, Becca. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. Ginny, did you have one? Yes. Continued prayers for Bill and Barb and for Sherry for healing and strength. And for Michael and Michael Capuro Michael. and Michael Miller and yes. all of those with health issues and needs right now, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Yeah, Teresa. A, a prayer of thanksgiving uh, as things at the seminary and the university are moving back towards something like what used to be. Uh, we will have a, a, a commencement in person outside. Um, we will be returning to regular office uh, work uh, June 1st and um, uh, full students in classrooms in the fall. But with, with all of that comes a lot of change again. And, and um, I think we're all sort of feeling the fatigue of, of the constant change. So it's, it's good news, but it's also with some apprehension. And giving up that 30 foot commute is gonna probably yeah. be hard too. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Any other prayers? All right, let's move into silence as we turn our hearts to prayer. Gracious God, you know the needs of the whole world. You know the anxiety of those in India trying to find oxygen for our loved ones when the hospital runs out. You know the needs of those around the world. Those that are still struggling for income, those that are struggling to be able to have the freedom of religion, even in the heart of Jerusalem, in the old city. You know the anxiety of each of us when we are truthful enough with ourselves to be able to admit where we are. And it is in the midst of those times that we pray for healing, that we pray for wholeness for ourselves or loved ones. It is in the midst of those times 
those in-between moments, even in between our breaths, when we're able to recognize the pain of another person and be able to reach out with your love, even giving more than we thought we had. And in the midst of these moments, in the midst of a Mother's Day where we celebrate all of those who have given birth to us or nurtured us into who it is that we are, those aunties and grandmothers and great-grandmothers, those strong women who chose never to have children only to be a part of the support structure of their neighborhood. We give you thanks for those that gave birth, but in knowing themselves, gave the care for that child to another. For all of the myriad ways of being mothered and mothering others, we give you thanks for this role in our life and in our communities. We give you thanks in this community for female leadership on our session, on our cabinet, in our pulpit. And we give you thanks that you have taken enough of the scales away from our eyes to be able to recognize their spiritual gifts, even as many of their colleagues struggle in other traditions. And so with full hearts and knowing the full complexity of what it means to be human, we give you thanks for mothers, those that saved us and those that failed us. And in the midst of that complexity of what it means to be human, we continue to pray. We continue to come together as your people to be able to live out this life of faith, recognizing your call on our lives. And so as we come to this moment, once again, we come saying this prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, praying with new words in hope that we might be able to have new hearts, saying, holy being whom we call by many different names, blessed are you, and blessed are we in you. May we create with you a realm of mercy, peace, and justice. May love be done in the here and now as it is in the infinite. May we share life and bread and hope. For our failures to love, we need forgiveness. May we find the paths of reconciliation. In the midst of evils, every incarnation, from the powers that possess our spirits and our structures, may we find liberation. In the power that is love, we seek to live and move and have our being. May it be so, now and forever. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 41 to 52. Every year, the parents of Jesus went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they went to the festival as usual. When the festival was over, they started back home. But the boy Jesus stayed in Jerusalem. His parents did not know this. They thought he was with the group. So they traveled a whole day and then started looking for him among their relatives and friends. They did not find him. So they went back to Jerusalem looking for him. On the third day, they found him in the temple, sitting with the Jewish teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his intelligent answers. His parents were astonished when they saw him and his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been terribly worried trying to find you. He answered them, why did you have to look for me? Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand his answer. So Jesus went back with them to Nazareth where he was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. Jesus grew both in body and in wisdom, gaining favor with God and people. We celebrate the written word of scripture. Thanks be to God. We celebrate the living word, Christ among us. Thanks be to God. For everyone born, a place at the table. For everyone born, clean water and bread. A shelter, a space, a safe place for growing. For everyone born, a star overhead. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. For young and for old, a place at the table, a voice to be heard, a part in the song. The hands of a child in hands that are wrinkled. For young and for old, a right to belong. And God will delight when we are creators of justice. And joy, compassion, and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice. Justice and joy. For everyone born. A place at the table to live without fear and simply to be. To work, to speak out, to witness and worship for everyone born the right to be free. And God will delight in creators of justice and joy, compassion, and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, on this Mother's Day, as we turn to scripture and see Mary, the mother of Jesus, as she struggles with being mother, may we learn anew what it is to be 
in a relationship with a mother, to be a mother, to understand the complexity of what it is to love, to be imperfect, and to trust that you are with us through it all. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. We can say that with joy and, and now that some of you have grandkids and hopefully they'll be by today and others of you have children who will connect today. And there's something just beautiful about that, about being able to celebrate our families and celebrate the ways that we are together. And it's also, I think, important to realize that in the midst of our celebrations, as people of faith, I think we're called to really see how difficult relationships can be. And, and so not to, to create these idyllic relationships, but to realize that our relationships are real. And that means that we are imperfect people doing the best we can to love each other. And that as we look to scripture, I, I think that this, this is such a precious text this text from Luke, where we see one of, the, one of the rare, actually, occasions where we are told about Jesus' childhood and what it was like for him to be part of a family as a child. Most of what we know about Jesus comes as he is a, an adult. And so just to have this glimpse into this family scenario, I think is, is so, so important for us and instructive. Because in the text this morning, we have the story of the family that Jesus is a part of going to Jerusalem. So these were pilgrimage festivals where people from all the outlying villages a number of times a year would all walk or ride by donkey to Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, there would be these public celebrations. And so it was during one of these times where the whole family had come to Jerusalem, they traveled together, they were with friends and relatives, it was a time of celebration, a uh, time of reunion, time of vacation, uh, time of, of really deep spiritual and religious experience. And so it was in this context that, that the family has gathered in Jerusalem, they've been there for a number of days, and the parents are part of the wave of friends and relatives that leave the city. And unbeknownst to them, Jesus has stayed behind. And we, we, we know how this can happen. And we've all seen Home Alone, how you know one of the kids for some reason or other isn't accounted for and the rest of the family thinks that the child is with someone else and they, and they, they start on their way. So it's, after a day of travel that Mary and Joseph realize that Jesus in fact is not with them and, and they're very concerned. So they leave the group, they go back to Jerusalem and start looking for him. And in an era where there are not cell phones, it's, it's tough to track kids down. And so there, we can imagine their anxiety is extremely high. They're wondering if something's happened to him, if he's okay. And they just, they can't find him for three days, they can't find him. And when they finally do, Mary basically bursts out and says, how could you have done this to us, Jesus? They find him in the temple and they just, she's just distraught and just asks him, how could he, how could he have done this? To them, his parents, again, a fascinating way to understand Mary's response that as she looks at Jesus, she is speaking her anxiety as his mother. And Jesus responds to her in a way that she simply doesn't understand. He, he basically says to her, this is where I belong. I am doing my father's work. Don't you understand this? Don't you know who I am? It's, it's kind, of, kind of the undertones of what he as the son is saying to his mother. And, and the text is very clear. It says that his parents do not understand what he is saying to them. But the text doesn't end there in that, in that adolescent place. I mean, how many of us who've been mothers of adolescents 
or parents of adolescents, you know, stepped into that moment where we have no idea what our kids are doing or why they're doing it. We just don't understand. But the text goes on and, and, it's, and it's these next couple of verses, I think that really are the gift of this text. And the text goes on and it says that even though Mary doesn't understand, she treasured all these things in her heart. And this, I believe, in the context of this text, is the true gift of a mother. And in this sense, a mother who is biological, yes, a mother who has actually physically nurtured a child that she's given birth to, and yet also a mother who may not be a log biological mother, but a mother of an adopted family or a mother who simply has mentored someone or been present in a way that has allowed someone else to be nurtured. So to understand mothering in this, in this broad sense and to look at this text and to see that the key to that mothering is that his mother treasured all these things in her heart. So even though she didn't understand fully what Jesus was doing, the gift of her mothering was that she kept in her heart her relationship with Jesus, her love for him, with the fact that she didn't understand. And all of that becomes this complex capacity to love unconditionally. They did not understand their son. Mary and Joseph did not understand, and yet they loved and they treasured all that they didn't understand in their hearts. It's possible that we have had that experience. I know I've had that experience of not understanding. And there, there have been so many times when I have realized in my own life as a mother, how young I was when I was a mother to young children and how much I didn't know and how much I loved my kids. I was in my late twenties when I gave birth. So I know some people have been even younger than that, but I also know I, I made so many mistakes. You know, if they always say, you know, youth is wasted on the young. You know, if we could be wise and old and give birth, how different our parenting would be. But to be able to look honestly at the way that those of us who are mothers have mothered and, and to realize that many of us were young, inexperienced, even though we were supported by other people, we hadn't done this before. And what it, what it meant for our kids that, that we learned things with them sometimes. And there were times where unintentionally, we, we did not maybe make the best choices. We didn't fully understand them. I mean, how is it possible to fully understand a two-year-old who's having a tantrum? You know, you just, how do you understand that? Or a 12-year-old who's struggling with his sexual identity, can we fully understand? And it, on some level, yes. And in other ways, we never fully understand our kids, our friends, our partners, our spouses. I mean, that's, that's the reality of what it is to be in relationship, that we are connected and we are separate and we are imperfect and we see and we don't see. And, and to simply accept that as part of the reality of parenting and to know that as people of faith, part of the challenge is to realize that in these very intimate relationships that we've had with people, that we are We are called to forgive, to be patient, and to understand limitation. And that is in part what this passage is able to say to us. They didn't understand, Mary and Joseph didn't understand their son. And yet Mary doesn't step away from him because of that. She steps towards him and says, we need to go home now. She steps into her role as mother and, and says, 
you are not old enough to live by yourself in Jerusalem. You need to come with us and we need to return to our home and you are still our son and we are still your parents. And so as she steps back into her role as mother, she also does so treasuring what she doesn't understand in her heart. We've had these experiences and Janie in her book speaks, I think very beautifully to this type of complex relationship of parenting. And, and I'm aware that not all of you have read Janie's books and we've said that we're gonna, we're gonna tie her book not only into our Tuesday discussion, but also into our, our sermon series during May. So without giving spoilers, just to, to give those of you who haven't read the book some key into the key, the key players, just to say that the book is based on the, the story of a woman, the main character, Elise, who struggles with with mental health challenges. And the book begins with her coming awake in the ER, the ICU, after a suicide attempt that has failed. And what we have in this story is an exploration of not only Elisa's struggle with her bipolar diagnosis, and the fact that she doesn't fully understand her behavior, doesn't fully understand what has happened to her. But also we have glimpses into the people who are a part of her life and how they respond to her mental health struggles, how they respond to her suicide attempt, how they respond to her, bi her bipolar diagnosis. And, and the, the giftedness of Janie's writing is that you have a whole spectrum of responses which really allows us as we read the book to understand that that's the truth for many of us is that our own responses may be across a spectrum in relation to people we encounter in relation to our kids. And that not only will there be a spectrum within us but that people in our lives will respond to us in very different ways. But this morning to, to simply lift up the main character's mother's response. And in some ways she's in a position exactly parallel to Mary and Joseph's position in the text for different reasons, of course. Mary and Joseph didn't understand why Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. And in, in Janie's book, her parents don't understand initially her bipolar disease or her suicide attempt. But what's very clear is that even though they don't understand and, and they know they don't understand, they're, they're completely overwhelmed by this crisis in their family and they, they look at their daughter and they, they, can't, they can't understand her at this moment in her life. They can't understand the choice she has made and they can't understand how she got there to this place of choice that she would choose suicide. And so we have this clear parallel that the parents can't understand their child. But again, like Mary and Joseph, they don't step away, which is always the temptation. If you don't understand, you don't know how to respond, you don't know what the right thing to do is, many people step away and they withdraw their love, they withdraw their support because they're not sure what the best thing to do is. So rather than make a mistake or rather than feel confused, they simply step away. But in the book, Elisa's parents don't step away. Like Mary, they step towards their daughter and they don't know what to do. They go into her hospital room and they, they don't know what to say to her. They, they don't know how to handle the situation, but what they do know is that they love her. And as the story unfolds, in some ways, that's all that they need to know. They will learn other things and they will be transformed by their relationship to their daughter. But at the beginning, like Mary, all they need to know 
is that their heart is big enough, is large enough to incorporate their inability to understand, but their desire to love. And that is the call that we have as Christians, I believe. The call to be able in times of crisis and times of stress and times of not understanding, be it kids or friends or spouses or other people in the church or the community, other people in our political landscape, to be able to not understand and not have the lack of understanding shut us down. And this is especially true, I think, in terms of mental health and mental health struggles. Again, this is what the book addresses and that, that it is one place in our culture where, where there are so many taboos and there's so much misunderstanding. And it's easy simply to default to that place and say, oh, we don't understand. We don't understand so we can't do anything and that we, we shut down our willingness to be present and supportive. And so I think as a, as a culture, this is really, really important for us to, to, to be able to examine this, to look at this. And I, I would encourage you to read Jenny's book because it, it, it wrestles with this very thing. The fact that, that Elisa's husband is a pastor in a conservative church and he's very concerned about how the church will respond to this, how it will look that his, his wife has mental health struggles and that the church in response to these mental health struggles actually is very judgmental and actually uses theology to judge the main character saying that her faith her lack of faith is what has actually caused her crisis and her struggles. And that if she simply had enough faith, that she would be fine. This is based on the, the perspective of, of the prosperity gospel where your well being is an indication of the depth of your faith. And if you are struggling financially, if you're struggling physically, if you're struggling with mental health issues, it's an indication that your faith is lacking. And therefore the church judges her. It's a way of blaming the victim, um, telling her that she is where she is because her faith is not strong enough. And that if her faith were stronger, she would be cured and she would not be wrestling with this. And we understand this from our perspective as being spiritual abuse and that there are varying degrees of this, not only in churches, but in the, in the culture at large, this lack of understanding of what it is to struggle with mental health. And, and the culture often embraces this, this sense that if you just worked harder, if you just you know, got yourself together, just you know, took better care of yourself, then you, you wouldn't be in this place. And that is simply not a true response to a mental health struggle. And so for us to be able to learn how it is to be present with our own mental health struggles, to not judge our own struggles with mental health, and many of us have struggled through COVID with mental health challenges, but to be within our own lives, able to find that place that Mary found in, in the text, a place where we can treasure our struggles in our hearts and realize that our struggles are held in this larger context of acceptance and love. And then for us to be able to, to bring that same understanding to other people who are struggling with mental health and struggling in other ways that we don't understand. That rather than judge, rather than withdraw, we stay present and learn the, the power and the majesty, the, the, the miracle, the magic sometimes of what it feels like to be present with love. And that is not to see that you're going to cure 
anything because often mental health struggles are, are things that are maintained and are lifelong struggles. But to be able to be present to those struggles, to not necessarily need to fix it, to not necessarily need to fully understand it, but to be able to not step away. As Mary did, she treasured these things in her heart and she stepped towards Jesus. Can we step towards our own struggles, our own internal conflicts? Can we step towards other people who are struggling with mental health issues and learn what it is to be in that place, often without answers, often making mistakes, often needing to ask forgiveness, often needing to ask to be guided by the person who is in struggle, often needing to ask for professional help, but willing to be present. And that is what it is to be a mother, I believe in its broadest definition, is to love and to know that we love from an imperfect place. All of us, all of us are works in progress. Some of us hopefully are more mature than we were when we first had kids. And hopefully our kids are understanding of that. Hopefully we're understanding of our parents and realize the state mistakes that they made. Is it true that we're always trying to do the best that we can? Hopefully. Can we be humble and grateful can we be accountable for our behavior, hold others accountable, and yet also be compassionate and forgiving? Can we enter into the complexity of what it is to be in relationship and be honest about our own limitations, about others' limitations, but be honest about the depth of our faith and that there truly are reservoirs of grace that continue to allow us to return to these often very challenging relationships, to return to what we trust is the power of love. And to do this within families, to do it with our parents, our siblings, our friends, our church friends. And to look at Mary, she did not understand, but she treasured these things in her heart. May we treasure what we do not understand. May we treasure each other. May our hearts expand and grow. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. During this time when we are sheltering in place and we cannot offer our gifts in person, we ask that you send your offerings online or via snail mail to Murdell Dibdahl or Paul Fish. 
and now from within our homes, we bring to God the offerings of our hearts and lives. May our gifts be used to bring hope, healing, freedom, and sustenance to those in need. Let us pray. Holy God, we offer our gifts to you in these uncertain times, trusting our gifts will be of help to those in need. May you use our gifts to bring healing, solace, and peace. In your many names we pray. Amen. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoiced the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young, I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have been, always been, with just one more surprise. I was there to hear your boring cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. Amen. Let us set each other forth with these words. May the grace that says you are not alone encourage you. May the mercy that says you are enough comfort you. May the love that says you are loved embrace you this day and every day. Trust the love. Celebrate Mother's Day. Now we're all human and that God is in the midst of all of us offering healing, offering peace, offering grace. Go in peace. Amen. Everybody have a very nice day.
Happy Mother's Day. Happy, Happy Sunday. Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day everyone. Mother's Day. Good to see Good you all. Your voice, Michael. Good to hear your voice, Michael. Yes. Yeah, great to hear your voice. <laughs> Michael? Yeah. So good to be with you all today. Oh, oh Michael. Wow. Wonderful. So wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Good. Oh. And baritone oh, is God. back. <laughs> oh, my God. Continue to be with you. Michael, are you feeling better? Yes. Can't wait to see you play the sax again. 